everyone, it's Carrie from sunshineinmypocket.com and I'm excited to be on the Pear Blossom Press channel today. I'm going to be using some easy lights and some twinkle lights while we create some cute little vans. And I wanted to show you that the twinkle lights and the easy lights, both of them, have three lights per set. So today I'm going to show you how to only have two lights for your projects. I only need two lights to light up the headlights of this van. And so I'm going to show you how easy it is to alter the number of lights. So today I'm just going to put this together rather quickly. There are lots of little pieces to this van, but it's pretty easy to put together. And so I'm, I'm using some metallic paper here, some silver metallic for parts of the accessories to the van and also for the windows of the van. And I'm just going to put these together, two of them at the same time. I found that if you're putting one together, you might as well put two together, right? Because it's just as easy. And actually, I think it's a little bit quicker because you get faster as you go. So you can see I'm just putting these pieces together, building them up rather easily and quickly. Now I'm just going to put those windows in for the reflection. And you can do these in any color you want. Today I stuck with some traditional colors, added a hot pink, but blue is pretty traditional, and also orange, but I'm going to also make a yellow one. I love stepping up projects with some lights. And when I saw this set come out, I knew I wanted to make them light up. It's a little bit tricky because you can see that the back die cut piece, the solid piece, is completely solid. And so when you cut that out of a color, you're not going to get much light shining through. But don't worry, I figured out a way. <laughs> so we'll get to that. So as I finish putting this together, you'll see how cute this is. And I found that it really helps to have a a jewel picker or a gem picker to put on these smaller pieces like the backs of the rear view mirrors that really helped out I'll add the little decals on the front I cut those from the mirrored cardstock as well as a white circle and I'm also going to add the windshield wipers here they're tiny but I think they add quite a bit to this now here's where we're going to get to the lights. I did cut the ancillary lights out with white cardstock, so I'm adding a little bit of light yellow here. It's hard to see in the video. This is Y00, so it's really light, but I wanted that extra little bit of yellow for these secondary lights. And I'll just go ahead and add a little liquid glue and then take my gem picker and add that as well. And this whole time that I've been putting this together, I've been thinking about how I'm going to make the lights light up because the dies themselves are a circle and then a little uh, round piece that goes around the whole light. So that's what it is supposed to look like. But in order to let the light shine through, I cut that little round piece out of vellum and I'm coloring that vellum up with that yellow Copic marker. And then in order to let the light shine through, I'm going to take a small little hole punch and I'm going to cut it in the center of where those lights go. Now it's easy to see on this actual die cut because it embosses where that where the lights go. So you know exactly where to put them. So I knew right where to punch the hole. And then when we're going to put the vellum piece over, you're going to see that light is going to shine through so pretty. So all I'm going to do is attach the vellum with a little liquid adhesive going around that hole that I punched earlier. And then we'll attach the little side pieces there too, which you can also cut those out of metallic cardstock, but I just cut them out of white for today because I really wanted the lights to shine. The lights are the star. So I'm also gonna finish this up on the other little van or bus. And then I realized that I didn't wanna add the vellum yet. I'm gonna show you why. So if you're making a card like this, don't add the vellum until you do the next step before you add the lights. But I wanted to test this out. So now here's the part where I cut off one of the lights and I made sure I got a blue line and a red line that were attached to that light so that I could cut that off. By the way, I did remove the battery first because I, I don't know 
<laughs> when you cut those off. I, it seems safer to not have the battery in there. So I removed the battery, I cut off the extra light. Now I'm gonna temporarily tape them, add the battery back in and test it out to make sure this is gonna work. And look how cute that is. So I was pretty excited at this point. I was pretty excited and I hadn't even thought about the background yet. But like I say, if you're doing this, you're gonna make a card like this, then don't add the vellum until you finish your background. For our background, we're making a super simple background today since we spent all that time figuring out the lights and the van or the bus. And I'm just gonna use one of these large blending tools to quickly blend on a beautiful sky there. It's a beautiful sunny day. And then I'm gonna add some brown to the bottom. I'm using some vintage photo distress ink. I'm gonna rip off some of that paper and use that as kind of a stencil or as a mask so that when I add the brown, it's going to look like a little mountain of sand, I guess. So I'm gonna do this a couple of times. So see, there we go, and then I'm gonna move it up, add an additional one, and there's a reason I'm doing this, and you'll see why in just a minute. So I've added a couple of layers of the brown, and now I'm gonna squish a little bit onto an acrylic block cover up the rest of my background and I'm going to add some water to that acrylic block and take a small little paintbrush there's the water and I'm just gonna flick it onto that sand so this is gonna make it look even more sandy it's gonna have those little droplets of brown water so I'll add quite a bit of this but I used a small paintbrush so I would get small dots. And then I did take my paintbrush and add just a few here and there where I thought it needed a few. And there's our sandy beach or mountain or desert. It could be whatever you want it to be. Now I'm just gonna put together a couple of these really awesome palm trees. I love how these came together. They're easy to layer up, just a few little layers here and it all comes together nicely. I cut that out of green cardstock and then I added a little bit of green ink to it as well, just to set that off just a little bit. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a little slit in that background and this is how kind of how I want the layout to go. I've got a sentiment already cut out that says, just live in the dream. And I'm going to cut out that, just a space in between where those mountains or hills or I don't know sand dunes <laughs> are and then I'm gonna nestle that palm tree right in there add some foam tape to the back of the palm tree and then glue down the rest of the trunk there and that's gonna be our palm tree there in order to make the lights and the wires go behind this I'm gonna remove that repositionable tape this was just temporary remember just I wanted to test it out so I'm gonna remove that and we're gonna add them to the back. But in order to figure out where they should go, I've cut another van here and I haven't added the vellum yet to this one. And this is so I can make a little pencil mark where those holes are and then I can punch out those holes in our background. So I used that same hole punch that I used before, but then I realized, wait a minute, it's not gonna fit all the way in where I need it to go. So I took out my Japanese screw punch. You can use an owl or a craft pick, whatever you have, but this, this Japanese screw punch is really great so you can just punch a hole wherever you need to add a hole. Now I'm gonna tape those lights down behind the background and put the van there, test it out, and look at that, that's gonna work really great. Awesome. So the next thing we need to do is have a press here little stamp and I'm using the one from Pear Blossom Press. There are also these little mini dies that come with this and those would be perfect for cutting out a little shape also that you could use for the lights to shine through if you don't have a mini hole punch or anything that will work for that. So I'm just marking where I want the press here button to go. I'm gonna take my mini Misty, stamp that down a couple of times and I am gonna heat emboss this, so I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. There you can kinda of see it, it's, it's really small, but it says press here. 
and I'm going to use some clear embossing powder over that. So I'll add that embossing powder and then just go ahead and heat set that. I want to do this because anytime you press on this, I really don't want that ink to smear, so the, the clear embossing powder will just lock that right in. Now I'm taking some double-sided tape and I'm just going to line this up where it needs to go. There we go. And I'm just going to tape it right down to the back panel. So just like that. And then I can tape down the rest of these wires just using some washi tape or here I'm just using some regular clear tape. And now it's ready to add the little bus. So cute. I'll use liquid adhesive for this, avoiding the vellum and where those lights are shining through. But just glue that van right on the front, just like this. To add this panel to our card base, we're going to want to pop it up just a little bit with some foam tape to leave room for that battery and the little button. And so we're going to use the world's best foam tape from Pear Blossom Press. They weren't kidding when they called this the world's best foam tape because it's already doubled up for you, so it's the perfect size for making a light up card and allowing room for that button. It's also great for shaker cards. The other great thing about it is that it is repositionable <laughs> for a period of time. So you've got some time to make sure that it's in the right spot. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I put foam tape down on a panel like this and I attach it to my card base, I don't always get it exactly right the first time around. So it's really nice to know that you've got a little bit of time to reposition it. And then after 24 hours, it becomes permanent. So it's a really great tape and forgivable too. And the other thing is, is the backing comes off really, really easy. So see, I'm just removing that backing now and it's very quick and easy. It doesn't stick. It doesn't give me a, any trouble, which I really appreciate. And did you notice that when I put that foam tape down, I did not put any over the lights themselves. I wanna leave room for those lights to really light up. And if you put the foam behind it, then it kind of dampens that a little bit. So I always just avoid those. And look, I had to reposition it a couple of times there. So look, it's great, it's wonderful. So there we go, that's so fun. Now I'll just add that sentiment right on there with some liquid adhesive, says just live in the dream. And then we can add a little surfboard right to next to the tree. I cut it out of orange and added a little bit of orange ink around the edges. And then after I put it all together and I looked at it for a while, <laughs> I thought it looked like a carrot. <laughs> now I cannot unsee that. But look how cool the lights are. The lights are really cool. So there's one. And of course I made some additional cards as well. I made one yellow one, that was our sample one. And I just used some ephemera on this one that I got. This is the one I used the twinkle lights on. So they kind of twinkle at different levels. And then I added a little hammock that I hung on the tree and the van there. <laughs> and that one I made with a sunset background. So now I'm testing out some different surfboards. There's a blue one, but I thought that kind of maybe disappeared a little bit. I made a yellow one and colored up a little bit of that design on there with some colored pencil. What do you think? Would you leave it orange? Would you make it blue? Or would you do the yellow one? Vote below, leave me a comment and let me know what you would do. Or, or do you just like the carrot? I mean, do you like the carrot look? <laughs> I think orange and hot pink are just a really nice color combination. Or maybe I'll add two of the surfboards like that. Any way you do it, these just turn out really, really cute, especially with those lights. I really think adding some lights adds some pizzazz to your card. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment and let me know your favorite surfboard color or your favorite van color as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.